Dear Minister of uh, Home Affairs, Mr. Cabrita, dear Executive Director from Frontex, uh, Monsieur Légéry, dear directors, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to thank you for being here and attending the first joint Interpol Frontex conference. It gives me the opportunity to illustrate Interpol's continued commitment to border management and related activities in enhanced cooperation with Frontex. We are experiencing dramatic growth in a humanitarian crisis with people crossing borders, seeking a better life, but also movement of criminals and terrorists that require Interpol to respond in strong cooperation with its partners in the border management and security field. Interpol and Frontex have a long history of cooperation. It started back in 2009, and throughout the last eight years, Interpol has assisted many Frontex operations at air, land, and sea borders within the European Union, in close cooperation with both Interpol national central bureaus and border agencies of the countries in which the operations are conducted. Just in 2017 alone, Interpol has participated in five joint Frontex operations, resulting in our deployed officer searching over one million passengers on travel documents against Interpol databases, which have generated 35 positive hits for fugitives, terrorists, and other known serious criminals, 22 of whom would not have been known without Interpol participation at border points that do not systematically use Interpol databases. I've just been briefed about the latest success story during a Frontex operation that occurred earlier this month, the case of a fugitive wanted by the Netherlands for fraud and forgery entered into Interpol database. The Interpol team deployed at Schiphol Airport found him during checks of IP data through the use of an Interpol portable solution, IBETCH. The fugitive passenger was arrested at the border by the Royal Marines that policed borders, then transferred to the Dutch National Police. Also, more details about this case will be provided later by our Dutch colleagues. Here, I want to highlight that today, Interpol and Frontex plan to introduce a new element on the horizon of the cooperation, the sustainability. The impressive results from our joint operations have demonstrated the necessity of a combination of greater use of Interpol databases at borders and new lines of communication between border authorities and their national central bureaus. Let me give you some examples of EU recommendations that parallel these concepts. On 6 April 2016, a communication from EU Commission and Council acknowledged the Interpol databases as one of the main information systems for border management and law enforcement, fostered the implementation of projects that enable simultaneous searches in the Schengen Information System, SIS, and Interpol databases and recommended to increase the added value of API data by establishing automated cross-checking against SIS and the Interpol databases. On 7 March 2017, the Council adopted a regulation demanding the Schengen Borders Code to reinforce checks against relevant databases at the external borders, both at entry and exit, carrying out systematic checks against relevant databases, including SIX and SLTD. Furthermore, Interpol's strong commitment to border security is also highly appreciated by the international community. Just as an example, let me remind you of Security Council Resolution 2178 from 2014 that recognizes the effort of Interpol against the threat posed by foreign terrorist fighters including through global law enforcement information sharing via its I-24-7 secure information system. Global databases and notices, in addition to its counterterrorism efforts and procedures to track stolen, forged identity papers and travel documents. 
However, Interpol's role in border security is not limited to data sharing on global databases. Under the UNCT ITF umbrella, Interpol is co-sharing the working group on border management related to counterterrorism, playing a pivotal role in providing guidance to member states on the implementation of the legal, institutional, and practical counterterrorism related border control measures required. Interpol standards are also recognized by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, that recommended its contracting states to swiftly report accurate information about stolen, lost, and revoked travel documents to Interpol for inclusion in the SLTD database and should query at entry and departure border control points the travel documents of individuals traveling internationally against once, again, uh, once uh, the SLTD. Finally, Interpol is executing several externally funded projects that focus on border security by encompassing capacity building and training elements, as well as operational activity delivered in partnership with the donors, member countries, and other border entities. The above challenges require both the General Secretariat and its NCBs to respond in a timely manner to the various challenges by leveraging Interpol's value in equipping local border officials with the tools necessary to streamline their border security practice and intercorporate Interpol's databases into their daily routines. To this end, over the past decade, Interpol rapidly expanded the access options available. Initially, police information running through Interpol was handled by users working in national central bureaus. We then extended the connection to specialist, na to specialist national units, and then, crucially, and that's the most important point, on the border control points to the end users. In the last three years, we have seen the number of police records in our systems double, reaching about 80 million police records. One of the newer resources, the Foreign Terrorist Fighters Analysis File, was created just three years ago and reached the milestone of 100,000 entities a few, years, a few weeks ago. Our databases are now queried almost 200 times every second. While this is already impressive, we continue to push for greater expansion of the I-24-7 communication system so that it reaches the front lines of policing across the globe and the timely availability of police information during border control is globally ensured. In order to achieve this goal, cooperation is our mission. And Frontex is our ideal partner. As also recently stated by the European Commission on its EU Action Plan Against Migrant Smuggling, 2015-2020. Cooperation between relevant EU networks and agency and Interpol should be strengthened. That was uh, the message from the EU. The upgrading and broader use of tools that enables the exchange of information on fraudulent identity and travel documents such as Interpol's Dialdoc and Frontex uh, reference manual for frontline border guards and law enforcement officers should be considered. We want also today highlight the combination of the respective values of Interpol and Frontex. Cooperation in the area of fraudulent doc uh, travel documents is key as travel and identity document misuse is a widely recognized threat against country security as supporting the clandestine transnational movement of criminals, foreign fighters, and terrorists as recently recognized by the AU Council when they highlighted document fraud at the new AU policy cycle crime priority. Throughout our cooperation, it is vital to enhance the primary inspection line, one that suffers greatly from a lack of supporting information on fraudulent travel documents due to the complexity of the environment. Although border guards are required to operate under tight time constraints to facilitate speedy passenger control, 
a closer cooperation between NCBs and border police will strengthen national capabilities to fight against this phenomena at border and consequently make our world safer. I thank you for your attention and wish you a successful conference. Thanks a lot. Thank you.